Shadow has one great defense against the perils encountered in tracking down criminals, his ability to become invisible. And we'll hear how he puts this ability to use in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you about a tire that has two great defenses against the two most common perils that threaten every motorist, skids and blowouts. This tire is the new Goodrich Safety Silvertown, and its first line of defense is the Lifesaver Tread. The tread that sweeps wet roads so dry you can light a match on its track. Gives you the quickest non-skid stops you've ever had. And its second great life-saving feature is the famous golden ply that provides motorists with scientific protection against dangerous high-speed blowouts. Give yourself and your family this vital double protection. Ride on Goodrich Safety Silvertown. The shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Cranston is known to criminals as the shadow. Never seen, only heard, his true identity is known only to his friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane. Today's story, Fountain of Death. Margo. Lamont, what's this all about? Well, Margo, I'll tell you. We're on our way to prevent a murder. Mur- murder? Who's murder? Well, that's just it. I don't know. Lamont Cranston, what are you talking about? Twenty minutes ago, I got a letter telling me that a murder was about to be committed. The note was signed, Dr. Anna Marler. Anna Marler? Who's that? Dr. Marler is one of the greatest research workers in medicine this world has ever known. The last time I met her was in Europe. And if ever there was a woman with a love of mankind in her soul... It's Anna Marler. It was very good of you to come here, Mr. Cranston, and you too, Miss Lane. We're very glad to come, Dr. Marler. But your letter said murder, Dr. Marler. No, no, please, my friend. There's so little time left. You must listen to me. All right. I sent for you because you alone have the strength and the courage to stand by me. Anything you want, Dr. Marler. You have not asked why I am in America. I will tell you. It is because there are powers in Europe putting code in terms of force and hate who would stop my experiment. Oh, Mr. Cranston, will you help me, protect me while I work? That's why Miss Lane and I are here. In my letter, I said that a murder was to be committed tonight. As the woman who is to be murdered is here in the very next room. Well, then let's go in. No, no, don't get excited. It is murder true enough, but the old age is the murderer. The woman is 95 years old. 95 years old? Yeah. Well, I, I'm afraid I don't understand. What can I do? You can help me perform a miracle. Did you say miracle? If you and Miss Lane will come this way. Go ahead, Margo. Yes, ma'am. Ah, you see, she is dying. It is so pitiful. She is breathing her last. Yes. Come, we will go close to her. Mrs. Cronin, try to open your eyes. It is I, your friend, Dr. Marler. Dr. Marler? No, it is I. Here is my hand. Oh, Dr. Marler. I know I'm old and my time has come, but I do not want to die. Not yet. No, no, you must not. No, no, you, you must listen to me. I... 
I tell you, I, I don't want to die. You must help me. Help me. Yeah, my friend, I will help you. Oh. Oh, you are so weak. You must not speak again. You must lie quietly while I get my instrument. Quietly. Yes, quietly. Oh, come, Mr. Cranston is leaning this side room. Yes, Doctor. You will help me. You will help me. Well, you saw the woman. You saw she is dying. Yes, of course. Dr. Marla, what can you possibly do for her? That is what I wanted you to hear and see. For many years I have worked in the laboratory in an attempt to discover the true nature of age. And while experimenting with many generations of white mice, I've made a strange discovery. A discovery which, oh, which goes beyond all understanding. Oh, I must act quickly or she will be done. While working on the little creatures, I discovered that when any organism has lived its full span of years, the cells within the body become aged, worn. Now I have discovered that by injecting an extract of the tissues of the... Oh, she's dying. Uh, quickly, my instrument case, come. Oh, I promised her. I must do it, I must. Hurry. She's dying. Oh, there's the hypodermic. Oh, my hands did tremble so. Here, I'll help, Dr. Muller. Yeah. Now the liquid. You'll see, Mr. Cranston, so green. I'll let it give this old woman a little more of life. Oh, my hands, they must be sure. No, no. No, she must live. Only a few seconds more until... Uh, there. The needle into her arm... No, she is all. She will not feel pain. Ah, now it is done. Ah, no. No, it will never work. Oh, Mr. Cranston, what have I done? My experiment, foolishness. The reaction of the mice, only the illusions of my own hope. Oh, I should never have done this to the old woman. A pulse. It's almost gone. No, oh, old friend, forgive me. In your head, death, do not hate me. Uh, uh, Dr. Marlowe, uh, huh? Look, uh, she's not dead. Not dead. Marco's right. She's not dead. Uh, Listen to her. Uh, look at her. Her lips, her cheeks. Her skin was old and wrinkled. And now look, the uh, color's coming back into it. Her eyes, they're opening. Uh, she seems to be growing younger. Younger? Dr. Marlowe. I, I feel better. Oh, Dr. Marlowe. Dr. Marla. Dr. Marla, look at her. She's sitting up in the bed. She's alive, healthy. Mott, it's a miracle. Dr. Marla. Oh, I feel as if I'm... I'm younger. Oh, look at my arms. They're warm, alive. My cheeks, I... I feel them round and full. Like they were years ago. Why, you've made me young, Dr. Marla. Young! Young! <laughs> Three days now since I restored that woman to oh, I have conquered age. Conquered age. May I come in, Dr. Marler? Oh. My apologies if I frighten you. Who are you? My name is Gorlin. Gorlin? I'm flattered. I see that I'm not entirely unknown. You followed me? I was on the same ship. Oh, but why? Why? I am an old woman. What do you want of me? It is not I. It is the state... They sent you? The state sent me. You work. It belongs to the state. But I am here in America. I am free. I repeat, your work belongs to the state. What do you want of me? The bottle of liquid. Liquid? I advise you not to be difficult, Dr. Marlowe. The liquid you used on that old lady, Mrs. Cronin. Oh, you heard what I did for her? Yes, I heard of your miracle, Doctor. And now the liquid. Give it to me. Why do you point that gun at me? It is merely to impress upon you to what extent I will go to get the fluid. What good will the liquid do you? Not me. The state. But the solution is not yet perfected. Perfected enough. Our chemists will be able to make huge quantities. What will you do with it? With this in our possession, the state will have an army of men who will be young like gods forever. Soldiers supreme and I will be their leader. Oh, no. Youth, everlasting youth. An army invincible. An army without end sweeping the world. But you cannot make men young to kill. Make them young to live. My own regiment first. And then, then all the state. Oh, no, no. It cannot do that. 
my work. It has been to preserve life, not kill and destroy. Oh, give it back to me. The bottle, give it back to me. Ah, stay away. No, you fool, stay away no, from no, me. No, give back that bottle. No. Ah. Uh, what a pity. The great Dr. Anna Marler. She has committed suicide. <laughs> Dr. Marler. Hmm, strange he doesn't answer. He's always in a laboratory. Dr. Marler. <laughs> Dr. Marler. Dr. Marler. Dr. Marler, what? Uh, Doctor. Uh, Doctor. Who did this to you? Uh, this is Cranston, Lamont Cranston. Doctor, try and speak. Tell me, who did uh, this to you? Uh, yes, yes, I'm listening. It took. It took liquid. Who took it? Who? Soldiers. Army. New army. Who shot you, Doctor? Gorlin. He followed me across the ocean. He wants to use liquid for invincible army. Soldiers. Death. Uh, oh. Dr. Marler. You discovered a miracle of life. And he gave you death in exchange for it. Rest well, Dr. Marler. I swear this to you. Before Gorlin can use what he took from you for soldiers, armies, war, he will meet the shadow. There's more thrilling action on the way in Act Two of The Shadow's Adventure. In the meantime, motorists, have you ever thought at what speed danger takes the driver's seat in your car? The shadow knows. The minute you hit over 40 miles an hour, your chances of a serious accident grow by leaps and bounds. Yes, danger begins at 40. Play safe. Slow down. But motorists, if roads are wet and slippery, can you slow down in time? Will your car skid, spin, swerve? Don't take chances. Equip your car now with a new Goodrich Safety Silvertown tire. Remember, this new Silvertown is the only tire that has the lifesaver tread with its amazing road-drying action. Like a battery of windshield wipers, the lifesaver tread sweeps the water right and left, forces it out through the deep drainage groove leaves a track so dry you can actually light a match on it. And when the tire leaves the track that dry, you can depend on it that it will stop you quicker, safer on a wet pavement than you've ever stopped before. And remember, when you ride on Silver Towns, you get still another life-saving feature, the famous golden ply to protect you against high-speed blowout. Yet these life-saving Goodrich Silver Towns are yours at no extra cost. Cranston, I never heard of any guy called Gorlin. And neither has anyone else on the paper. Okay, Fred. Thanks. Goodbye. So long. Well, Margo, check me again. Lamont, are you sure you heard the name right? Yes, yes, I'm positive. Gorlin. Gorlin. That name has been ringing in my head every minute since the dying Dr. Marla whispered it. Gorlin is someplace in this town. And by all that's holy, I'm going to get him. But you've been trying for hours to locate someone who's heard of him. Oh, Lamont, you've tried everywhere, and no one has even heard of him. But he does exist. He killed Dr. Marlin. Her own lips said so. Margo, I've got to get my hands on this doctor. I've got to get him on Marlin. It isn't the doctor's murder alone I'm concerned with. I've got to prevent his using that discovery of hers to create huge armies. Armies of old men made young. And young men always young. I've got to prevent that. All well, sounds very noble, doesn't it? You know, five hours have gone by... I haven't got the slightest idea who or where the man is. It's... I'll answer it. Hello? Hello, is this Lamont Cranston? Yes, this is Cranston. Well, my name's Tom Brady, Mr. Cranston. I don't think you know Yes, me, yes, but... I know who you are, Brady. Foreign correspondent on the examiner. Yeah, that's right. The uh, reason I called you, Cranston, is that I 
Just got down to the paper. They were telling me that you're looking for a man named Gorlin. Is that right? Yes, yes, I am. Do you know him? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Mr. Cranston, Gorlin isn't exactly the kind of fellow I'd, I'd admit to being my friend. Do you know where to reach him, Brady? No, not exactly, but I saw him coming out of a travel agency about an hour ago. And if there's a boat sailing for Europe tonight, Gorlin's on it. He had a handbag in his hand and a going-away look in his eye. Well, is there anything else I can tell you? You've told me plenty. Thanks and good night. Lamont, you found him. Margot, quick. The newspaper. What ships are sailing tonight? There aren't any boats sailing to Europe tonight. Margot, don't talk nonsense. Give me that paper. There must be at least half a dozen boats sailing. Lamont, if you listen to me, you haven't seen tonight's papers, but I have. The ship loaders, they're striking. No ships are sailing. I can't understand it. From what Brady said, Gorlin must be trying to skip the country. Oh, Lamont, please don't look like that. You've tried everything. You've done all you can. But that isn't enough, Margot. I've got to get him. If he gets to Europe with that bottle of liquid, I fail so completely that any good I might have been able to do in my life up to now is wiped clean off the slate. And I'm not going to fail, Margot. But Gorlin can't sail tonight, Lamont. Well, how do I know he isn't going to some other city and sailing from there? Oh, because he'd have no reason to. As far as he's concerned, no one's after him. Oh, stop worrying, Lamont. You've got time yet. There's tomorrow. He can't get away tonight, not unless he hires a plane and flies the ocean. And I don't think he'll do that. Margot, wait a minute. He doesn't have to hire a plane, not a bit of it. What are you talking about? The new giant clipper ship. It's flying to Europe tonight. Quick, Margo, is your car outside? Yes, Lamar. We've got 15 minutes to get to the airport. We can't possibly make it. It's 10 miles. We will make it. We've got to. That murdering Devon Gordon has a rendezvous with a shadow, and I must try and keep it. Here. Let's go, Margot. Come. Hurry, Margot. Hurry. Oh, so We've got to make it. Come. How soon is she going? Right away, sir. Well, Mark, what are you going to do? I'm getting on board, Margot. But what if he isn't aboard? There's no time to find out. Have to take a chance. Well, Margot, it's nice to Europe. Hurry up, sir, if you want to make a plane. Got to be done. Goodbye. Wish me luck, Margot. Well, Margot. You just made it, sir. At your service, sir. Is there a passenger on board by the name of Gorlin? Yes, sir. Mr. Gorlin is in cabin three on the corridor to the left, sir. I see. Thank you, Stuart. Hey. Who is it? Who is there? All right, all right, I'm coming. Yes, 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 what do you... Oh. Nobody here. a good rest now. And tomorrow... Where is the liquid, Gorlin? <clears throat> Who said that? Who spoke? Nobody in the cabin. And why did I hear... Where is the liquid? <laughs> Must have thought that myself. The liquid. My suitcase. I must see. See if the bottle is broken. <laughs> no, quite safe. Ah, you sound good in my ears. In a few hours... <laughs> in a few hours? What, Gorlin? <gasps> Why don't you answer? In a few hours, what, Gorlin? Who? Who speaks? I am the shadow. Oh, there's... There's no one in the room. Where? Who? I will you not to see me, Gorlin. Will? Will? There is no will stronger than mine. And yet I see you, Gorlin. But to you, I am but a voice. Yes, I... I do hear you. Who are you? The shadow that comes between civilization and those who would destroy... <laughs> You laugh, Gorlin. Yes, I laugh. I laugh. You think I'm afraid of a, a voice? What can a voice do? It has made you reveal the hiding place of the liquid. Oh, you know of that? 
And I know of your bullet that killed Dr. Marla. She was an enemy of this state? No, Gorland. She was a woman who had devoted her life to the good of man. Well, you have talked enough. What do you want? The bottle of liquid in your hand. Well, why don't you take it from me? You will give it to me. Will I? Perhaps you would like this. The bullets in that gun won't help you this time, Gorlin. The room is small. I stand before the door and shoot around the walls. Where would you be then, Shadow? Don't press that trigger, Gorlin. So, you are like other men. You are afraid to die. Poor. The walls of the cabin are thin. Press that trigger and the bullets won't reach me. They'll reach the tanks of gasoline. Oh, yes, that's true. You had forgotten you were 5,000 feet up in the air, hadn't you, Gorlin? And now... Give me the bottle. Oh, how can I fight what I cannot see? Well, I'm a man of the army. I know that sometimes to retreat is as good as to advance. I choose to retreat. Will you join me? What do you mean? Join me. You hear me? Join me. You with your power of hypnosis that hides you from human eyes. I with this elixir of youth. Between us, we can hold Europe and all the world in our hands. Shadow, join me. My answer is... Give me that bottle, Gorlin. It won't do you any good. Why do you say that? Because with the liquid or without, the power of everlasting youth is mine. What do you mean? A few hours before leaving, I had the poor lamented Dr. Marler's discovery analyzed. The ingredients of the liquid were remarkably simple. I could give you the bottle, but the formula remains in my head. So you see, my mysterious friend, you have no choice. You must join me. You are silent, eh? <laughs> so we will drink to the future. The future of might and power and glory. Your glass, Mr. Shadow. I will set it here and, and mine here. All quite friendly. You will find this wine most excellent. And now, my glass. So... Now, lift your glass. We will drink. Still silent. You will not join me. <laughs> you are completely defeated, eh, Shadow? Very well, I... I drink alone. Ah, <laughs> good wine, Shadow. It is a pity you do not drink. The pity is for you, Garland. For me? But I drank. But what did you drink? I drank wine. You thought you palmed the little bottle very cleverly, didn't you? I do not know what you're saying. I am saying that as you poured the wine for me, the other liquid joined it in the glass. Dr. Marler's liquid. <laughs> How clever of you to see that. Uh, such a large dose of the rejuvenation liquid. It, it might have been most unfortunate for you. You should be very happy you did not drink. But you drank. Huh? You didn't see my hand reverse the glasses. Reverse? No. No, you lie. Smell the glass you drank from. No, you lie. I did not drink the liquid. Oh, I'll kill you. Where are you? I'll kill you. I'll... Oh, my throat. Now you know I spoke the truth. No, no, I, I am all right. I must be all right. My destiny to, to lead great armies. No. No, you are wrong, Shadow. I suddenly feel stronger. Ha! You see, I am always victorious, Mr. Shadow. We shall see, Gorlin. What, what's happening to me? My head, it, it suddenly spins. That is the liquid beginning its work. No, no, it can't be. You should see your face, Gorlin. It's growing rounder, younger, no. like that of a young man. No, no, And it will it grow be. even younger as the seconds tick by no, until you see, become no. a 16-year-old, then no. a small boy, then a baby, no. and finally no, depart from this earth. Do you hear me, Gorlin? <laughs> you will vanish from this earth. No, no, you lie. You look about 16 now, Gorlin. It's all I won't die this way. I won't. Don't open that window, you fool. I choose my own death, Shadow. I choose my own death. Ah! I'm still waiting for you to finish the story, Lamont. Wouldn't you rather hear me play, Margot? It's really much more interesting. No, the story first, please. Well, really nothing more to tell. Gorlin was killed when he leaped from the window of the plane. Oh, it must have been a horrible experience, Lamont. 
But did he really drink the rejuvenation liquid? <laughs> no. However, I did fill his drink with a few drops of this harmless stimulant that I had in vial in my pocket. That exhilarated him, and the power of suggestion did the rest. Then Dr. Marlowe's secret is still safe? Yes, Marlowe. But I destroyed it. You see, there was good and bad in that liquid of youth. Dr. Marlowe wanted to give the world the good. And Garland sought to spread its evil. Spread it with an army of deathless soldiers marching like a scourge across the face of the earth. They're both dead now. And their secret has died with them. is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is now on sale at your local newsstand. Ha, 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 ha.